The war over in Ukraine is gaining momentum, and the US and NATO countries are finally starting to supply heavy weapons to defend against the Russian invaders. One effective means of deterring the Russian rule is an armored personnel carrier, which has long established itself as a reliable platform for supporting infantry and transporting soldiers in the heat of battle. Let's have a look at what kind of military vehicles the armed forces of Ukraine will be getting from their foreign partners. M113 this armored personnel carrier, jokingly called the Combat Bus, is the most massive armored personnel carrier in history. Despite the fact that it was put into service in 1960, this combat vehicle still serves the armies of dozens of world states. The M113 is the first armored personnel carrier whose body is made entirely of aluminum. This has significantly reduced its weight while maintaining a sufficient level of crew protection from small arms fire. Tests in 1957 showed that aluminum armor not only provided better protection than steel armor, adequately withstanding the effects of armor-piercing bullets and high explosive fragmentation of field artillery shells, but was also more effective in providing rigidity to the whole structure. The vehicle's crew consists of two people, a driver and a commander. In addition to these, though, the armored personnel carrier can carry 11 soldiers. In total, more than 80,000 M113 units were produced in three global modifications and hundreds of local variations for different countries. The last global version, called the M113A3, appeared in 1987, having been extended out to 16.4 feet in length greatly increasing its mass from 10.37 to 14.04 tons with additional armor. This required a corresponding increase in the engine power. As a result, the heart of the updated armored personnel carrier was replaced with a 6V53T Detroit diesel turbocharged diesel engine, which provided a power output of 215 horsepower, while reducing fuel consumption by more than 20%. Thanks to this increase in power, the armored personnel carrier has noticeably improved dynamics and acceleration while maintaining speed characteristics. A mere 27 seconds is all it took to reach 31 miles per hour instead of the 69 seconds needed for earlier versions of the vehicle. One also cannot discount the increase in the comfort regarding the driver's work, who now controls the armored personnel carrier with a more familiar car steering wheel rather than with levers as before. As for the main armament, next to the commander's cupola, the M113 is equipped with a time-tested 12.7mm Browning M2 HB heavy machine gun. Its ammunition load consists of 2,000 rounds, and the machine gun can be fired at both ground and air targets. The Indiana National Guard has already prepared the first batch of 200 armored personnel carriers for shipment to Ukraine in addition to which the United States has requested another 15 M133s from Portugal, which have been in service with the local army there for about 30 years. Portugal, in turn, willingly came through, agreeing to transfer said combat vehicles over to the armed forces of Ukraine. Stormer HMV In an effort to keep up with its main ally in the face of the U.S., the UK will also be giving Ukraine some of their Stormer armored personnel carriers, which were created by engineers from Alvis, now better known as BAE Systems. Like most other modern armored personnel carriers, Stormer is produced in several configurations to perform different tasks on the battlefield. Despite the existence of only two main versions, the base model and the Stormer 30, more than a dozen different variations were created based on this armored personnel carrier, from engineering vehicles and self-propelled mine layers to legitimate Stormernators armed with Star Streak missiles. Unlike the basic model, which first appeared back in the 1970s and was designed for a team of three people and eight fighters transported in the normal fashion, the Stormer HVM, transferred by Britain to Ukraine, appeared much later in 1997. The Stormer HMV weighs an impressive 13.5 tons, fueled by a six-cylinder Perkins T6.3544 diesel engine and 250 horsepower, allowing it to reach 50 miles per hour with a range of over 400 miles. The SAM BTR Stormer HVM does not have a radar station. An overview of the airspace is carried out by an all-angle optical station with a target recognition system and the guidance provided makes it possible to launch missiles unnoticed by the enemy, utilizing an aiming module with thermal imaging and laser channels. At the same time, the Stormer HMV itself does not emit anything. The launcher is designed for eight Star Streak or Martlet missiles with a range of up to 22,965 feet. Taking into account the fact that Star Streak man pads have been faithfully serving Ukraine soldiers for almost a month, mastering this new toy is unlikely to take them much time at all. 
The Bushmaster. The Bushmaster is a 4x4 armored vehicle built by ADI, now a subsidiary of Tails. It was the first armored vehicle designed and entirely manufactured in Australia since the Sentinel tank, which was originally from the 1940s. Prototype was made in 1996, and just two years later, the Bushmaster was already undergoing intensive testing. The Bushmaster's main competitors in the 2000 IMV Bushranger competition were the ASLAV 8x8 and the M113A1, but it was the Bushmaster that won. Although the main purpose of the Bushmaster's appearance was to transport fighters to the mission area without providing for direct participation on the battlefield, the engineers still equipped it with a sufficient level of armor capable of withstanding bullets up to 7.62mm, grenade fragments, enemy claymore mines, and explosions from devices with up to 20 pounds of explosive. The V-shaped monocoque helps to reflect the blast wave, reliably protecting the one driver and nine passengers from any surprises. The basic version of the armored personnel carrier, which sports a six-cylinder turbocharged Caterpillar 3126E diesel engine with 300 horsepower, allows the Bushmaster to cover almost 500 miles at speeds of up to 68 miles per hour. In addition to the basic armored personnel carriers, several variants of this vehicle were also created to include those for doctors and firefighters, and a newer version for the infantry received the option to install a third machine gun of 5.56mm or 7.62mm caliber. A shipment of 20 Bushmaster Armored Beauties worth about $35 million was perhaps the fastest decision made to allocate military aid in Australian history. At least, this is how it was described by local military experts. The first part of this shipment of military assistance flew out of Australia aboard a Boeing C-17 Globemaster a week after the President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, addressed the Australian Parliament with a request for these armored personnel carriers, and today the APU fighters have begun to actively use them on the battlefield. Piranha 3 The Piranha is a family of Swiss armored vehicles developed by Moag, which since 2010 has changed its name to the much less memorable General Dynamics European Land System. More than 50 years and five generations of vehicles have passed since the first Piranha armored personnel carrier was produced, various modifications of which are currently in service with the armies of more than 20 different countries around the world. The Piranha is produced in chassis versions with either 4x4, 6x6, 8x8, or 10x10 bulletproof wheels. Each of these versions of the armored personnel carrier has several further variations with different degrees of armor and types of turrets to fit various roles, from command vehicles and fire support vehicles to police modifications. At the same time, the Piranhas are amphibious and move through the water with the help of two propellers located in the stern of the hull. As additional equipment, night vision devices, a filter ventilation unit with a radiation, chemical, and bacteriological protection system, as well as air conditioning systems can be installed in the armored personnel carrier, turning this vehicle into a literally impregnable fortress on wheels. The thick layer of armor also helps with this as it can easily withstand even a direct mind blast or a direct shot from an RPG. One country that operated these armored personnel carriers is Denmark which just last week announced its decision to transfer 25 Piranha 3s to help the Ukrainian defenders. The heart of this modification is the Detroit Diesel V653 TA engine with a power of 350 horsepower and the Orlikon GDD BOE turret with a 35mm KDE cannon, 7.62mm FNMAG machine gun, and 76mm Nebel Werfbecher. With its impressive 18-ton mass, decent speeds of 62 miles per hour, and a range of up to 485 miles, this 1994 workhorse will help Ukraine kick hundreds of Russian liberators out of its territory. PBV-501 In addition to the newer types of weapons used in critical situations, one can also look to the old-school stuff. One example of such machines is the modification of the Soviet armored personnel carrier BMP-1, the PBV-501. PBV-501 is the result of a $25 million contract between the Swedish Defense Equipment Administration and the Czech repair company VOP-26. These armored personnel carriers retained the original design and guns of the basic BMP-1, which entered service with the USSR Army in 1967. 
In addition to three crew members, these armored personnel carriers can accommodate up to eight infantrymen, providing fire support to the infantry via a 73mm 2A28 smoothbore gun and its auxiliary weapon, a 7.62 Kalashnikov machine gun. Despite the engine's age, its 300 horsepower capacity still allows one to accelerate the armored personnel carrier up to 40 miles per hour with a cruising range of up to 370 miles. After the Swedish Army purchased a batch of 350 PBV 501s from Germany, it proceeded to modernize them. They dismantled the 9M14M Malutka launcher, installed a new fire system, and replaced some of the materials along with the vehicle's internal equipment, bringing it all up to NATO standards. Additionally, the Swedes installed an improved engine and transmission, new weapon racks, high beam headlights, side skirts, and carried out a full blown disinfection of the armored personnel carrier from asbestos. Now, 58 of the 350 PBV 501s in storage with the Czech Republic will be sent to the battlefields in Ukraine. This decision was announced by German Defense Minister Christina Lambrecht, who approved the APC's shipment. By the way, this is not the first attempt to send PBV 501s to Ukrainian fighters. Back in 2019, the Czech Republic attempted to transfer such armored personnel carriers to Ukraine, but they were all instantly blocked by ex-German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Unlike Olaf Scholz, she flat out refused to supply weapons to Ukraine because of her friendship with the Russian president. Centauro According to the Italian media, in addition to financial assistance and the supply of ultra-short-range air defense systems, mortars, artillery ammunition, communication systems, and anti-tank weapons, Italy is considering supplying Ukraine with heavier weapons as well. We're talking about the 1991 Centauro Armored Personnel Carrier, which is in service with the Italian and Spanish armies, as well as Oman. This armored personnel carrier was created by the Iveco Fiat Otto Melara Company by order of the Italian army, and was planned to be not only a destroyer of enemy armored vehicles, but also as a reconnaissance vehicle. During its period of mass production, 484 such machines rolled off the assembly line, some of which were exported while others were further modified for various needs. In addition to the standard 7.62mm machine gun, the armored personnel carrier was equipped with a day and night sight, sporting a thermal imager and laser rangefinder. Some modifications were also equipped with a 120mm Otto Breda 125 over 45 smoothbore gun and anti-aircraft 12.7mm remote-controlled machine guns. What version the Italian authorities will arm the Ukrainian armed forces with still remains a mystery, although journalists are trying regularly to find out, along with when we can expect the approval and shipment of the first batch of Centauro. We sincerely hope that politicians in Europe and the United States will have enough time gained through the heroism of Ukrainian soldiers to speed up the delivery of these heavy weapons and ensure a peaceful sky over their heads against the backdrop of this new fascist threat. What do you think? Will the new deliveries of armored personnel carriers change the course of battles in the Russo-Ukrainian War? Share your guesses in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content just like today's. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.